Good evening, and thank you for joining us here on the Evening News. Topping our headlines today, Texas now on its way to reopening the Lone Star State today. Governor Greg Abbott laying out dates for lifting some of the restrictions that we have been under for weeks now at this point. So on Monday, April 20th, state parks will reopen. However, you will have to still wear a face mask and remain socially distanced. On Wednesday, April 22nd, surgery restrictions will loosen. On Friday, the 24th, all regional retail stores can reopen with a to-go service. And on Monday, April 27th, the governor is expected to announce additional openings. The statewide stay-at-home order, by the way, expires on April 30th. Now, this ease on restrictions come as we see more reported cases of COVID-19 across Southeast Texas. More than 6,700 people have tested positive for the virus and more than 130 of our neighbors have died. Well, the biggest question is what this means for all the businesses out there that have had to close because of the pandemic. We now go to ABC 13 Stephen Romo for a closer look. These changes announced by Governor Greg Abbott today caught some people off guard because they're coming much more quickly than some people thought. That leaves some excited to get back to work, but other people have their concerns. We have uh, better information. Governor Greg Abbott's plan to reopen Texas will happen in phases, but it's not exactly slow. Starting one week from now, the plan says retail businesses will be allowed to sell items takeout style like many restaurants are doing now. We have it all set up. You can order it. We even have a discount code and then we can either deliver it to your door or you can come here by appointment and pick it up. Vicki Rizzo, owner of More Than You Can Imagine, a retail and consignment shop, is eager to get back to work. I think everybody in the country has been, and in Houston, have been kind of in the mood not to shop too much. Other business owners aren't as confident with the governor's timeline. Texas is last in the nation when it comes to testing for the virus, and up to one in four people with the virus may not show symptoms. I think testing is incredibly important, and we can look at numbers. Uh, and see where we are. Marcus Davis, owner of the Breakfast Club in Midtown, says he's not so sure customers will come pouring back in as fast as state leaders think. He says the priority should be adding more funds to federal assistance, like the Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses, which ran out of money this week. If we're interested in, in the economy, then tend to the people who will shut down first, tend to the restaurants and the bar. Still, some retailers see the governor's announcement as much needed progress. We are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Stephen Romo, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Okay, so after unveiling the plan to reopen the state, our local leaders responded to the governor's plan. ABC 13's Maya Shea has more on that. Even as Governor Greg Abbott sounded fairly optimistic about slowly opening up the state, uh, our local leaders, the county judge and the mayor here in Harris County in Houston, sounding a word of caution. They say, hey, widespread testing is just beginning to roll out. We're nowhere near there yet. Let's take a look at, for example, what happened on this Friday. Just this morning, the two Walgreens rapid testing locations just opened. And this afternoon, Harris County just announced they will start testing asymptomatic people. The the city of Houston just yesterday, first time hitting a thousand people per day testing capacity. So still a long way to go. Both the judge and the mayor say they would like to open things up, but first and foremost, they want to listen to the advice of medical professionals. And at this juncture, I think it's important for the people to hear from our doctors, from our hospitals, that now is the time to start opening up the doctors and I would encourage them to become a public part of this conversation and not just allow it to be a political discourse. Right now is precisely the worst time to let our guard down because we may be close to the maximum of cases and we're either gonna go back up and go to where we know we shouldn't or we're gonna be able to make it through to the other side and recover. For now, our local leaders urge everyone to continue to practice social distancing and stay home. In the next couple of days, we expect them to individually name their respective leaders in the county and city level to lead our communities as it works toward its way to reopening. Reporting from Transtar, Maya Shea, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Maya, thank you. Well, one Missouri City family now under quarantine after visiting Louisiana. That was one of Governor Greg Abbott's executive orders that he issued a couple of weeks ago. But how is it being enforced and how is it being tracked? ABC 13's Raven Ambers has an interesting story. 
This was supposed to be his family trip to see their grandson, and they knew they would have to quarantine when coming back to Texas, but they weren't expecting someone to actually show up to their front door and check on that. So we um, decided we would go for Easter. An Easter weekend getaway to Louisiana to see her six-month-old grandson has turned into a 14-day quarantine for Stacy Hohenstein, her husband, and young son, Jax. On their way back into Texas on Monday, they were stopped by a DPS trooper asking where they had been and why. And they came and asked us, and we told them, why we went, where we went, that we stayed quarantined. Um, and they said, you, oh, it's mandatory now that you go home and um, quarantine for 14 days. Don't leave your house, have no one at your house. And while she knew it was the law, she was planning to quarantine anyway. What she didn't expect, a follow-up three days later. He called mine and my husband's phone before he came, um, but we didn't recognize the number, so neither one of us answered. And about 15 minutes later, he showed up at the door and he said, I just need to verify that um, Stacy, Mike and Jax are in the home. Because her husband works from home and she's a stay at home mom. Hohenstein says this hasn't impacted them much, but she hopes it serves as a reminder to people crossing into Texas from the Louisiana border. If you're caught breaking that mandated quarantine, you could face a $1,000 fine or up to six months in jail. Reporting live, Raven Ambers, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right, we've been talking about a huge need for food donations. You can still help many hungry families in the Houston area just by sending a text message. Make a donation right now just by texting ABC 13 to 41444. You can choose how much money you want to give, and we want you to know every single dollar donated counts. Okay, let's get a quick check on your weekend forecast. Here is our chief forecaster, David Tillman, with a look. It looks like parts of the weekend will be wet and stormy out there. We're calling for a 60% chance for rain on Saturday. The bulk of that will be during the afternoon. There'll be some rumbles of thunder. Can't completely rule out an isolated strong storm. Because the cool front will be moving in, we'll have a low of 58 degrees Saturday morning, a high of 73 as that front lifts back to the north as a warm front. Sunday, storms are going to be likely. There's a 70% chance. Morning low temperature 69, high of 83. Strong storms possible on Sunday, but it's somewhat conditional. I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. Here's a look at the forecast for the rest of the evening and overnight tonight. We'll have scattered showers as that cool front settles into the area. Saturday morning should be dry. It could be dry around midday as well. And then as we head through the afternoon, a disturbance will come in riding over that warm front that will be lifting back in and that means scattered thunderstorms. It appears that the best chance for seeing those on Saturday will be north of the city of Houston or from Houston to the north, I should say. And there's a slight chance for a strong storm when that happens. Now there's a better chance for severe thunderstorms coming up on Sunday, but if our atmosphere is capped, we may just end up with scattered thunder showers around here with the bulk of the really severe weather to the north and to the east of the area. So we'll be watching Sunday very closely for the cap. If the cap is strong, we might not see much activity, but if that cap breaks, we could see some strong to severe thunderstorms around here as we get into the midday hours on Sunday. 60% Saturday, 70% Sunday, Monday and Tuesday look to be dry, and then we'll have another chance with thunderstorms with another strong storm system coming in as we head into next Wednesday. And that's going to do us do it for us here on the evening news. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you will join us again tonight at 10 o'clock on ABC 13. Have a great Friday evening.